We want to tell you, hey, if you're going to go run a lead or visit a job site or you got a little honey hole neighborhood you know about, how about you take like 15 homes, assign it to the guy running the lead, right? And just say, I expect you to put a door hanger on those 15 doors. And if you ate your Wheaties this morning, I expect you to knock 10 of them. So literally what we're trying to do is, is every user that comes on our platform, the goal is that every lead they run, whether it's one a day or five a day, creates a bite-sized list of like 10 to 20 homes. Yes. And it's a curated list of owner-occupied homes that's on the map. They get a notification on their on their iPhone that says, hey, Chris, you've been assigned 15 homes around that lead you're running at 2.30. I open up that list and I go, done, 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 done. And everybody's like, way to go, Chris. You just touch 15 more homeowners. And then guess what? By the end of the year, I've walked up to 5,000 doors, right? I so that's what we're in the business of doing. What's up, everybody? This is Sam Tagger with the DDD podcast, and we got a lot happening right now. We're getting closer and closer to DDDCon. Uh, just finalized a lot of the workshop speakers. So make sure to go to the website and see all the different awesome, amazing speakers. I mean, from Adam Shantz, who did a thousand alarms in a summer, 200 and something in a week, which is unhuman, uh, to, you know, Josh Sutherland, who did a hundred a week, to guys like, you know, Kyle Nielsen, the VP of Active on recruiting, to, you know, guys like, you know, Bill Murphy, who does Solar Cheat Code, to, you have, I mean, there's so many cool, speakers coming this year that it honestly is like I, I forgot jordan peterson and tom bilio and dave Meltzer. like i'm more amped about our workshops and our and our you know behind the scenes teaching on you know tanner williams on setter closer model and 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 how to properly do the, that or you've got guys like brian galke who's teaching facial reading and how to like understand profiling by not even talking to them just looking at their eye shapes and their you know it, it's like if you're somebody that's looking to really level up this is something you definitely would not want to miss and and, and bring the team and today we have a, a really special guest Chris Hofstra, who is all the way from Michigan, and he's coming in. Um, he owns a company called Lead Scout. He's one of the co-founders, and you know these these guys have taken not just like digital marketing and going and posting ads. They've actually got their own internal tech to supplement a lot of this like the nuances that come with lead generation and and traditional like lead companies and um you know background in transportation gets into the leads and marketing companies has blown this company up and it's so cool to like meet entrepreneurs that kind of take took risks and you know decided hey i'm gonna go on this other direction that has nothing to do with transportation and and really dive into entrepreneurship and i'm sure he's had his fair share of journeys and we'll dive into all that but chris thanks for being on the show my man hey it's great to be here honored thanks uh, sam i'm glad you're good dude and thank you for coming out to door to door con i guess why why this is your first year out there right or were you out there yeah. last? so yeah. why why door to door con like why is this a show that you're excited to be part of and because every single user that that we support on our platform, we want to be thinking about D to D. So what the content you put out makes our users better. So awesome. without without your content, without your, you know, without the 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 breakout sessions that that teach these, you know, eye recognition stuff, um, you know, our platform isn't the, you know, will never be the, the, as much as it can be. So yeah, it's nice having people that are face to face that can show up and like actually lock a deal down. Uh, right. So let's let's talk about that. Let's. Uh, so you've done lead generation. You guys launched in what? 2019. You said. 2019. Yep. So it's been what? Three four years. Uh, three, four, three and a half years. You. What are some of the nuances you've seen as you've tried to tackle leads, and you know get into that industry? Like I think everybody and their dog wants to be a digital marketer, and they're like, oh, I'll get you leads, and I'll sell you this, and. You know, everybody in door to door is like, how can I get off the doors and not have to do lead? And I can just have to go <laughs> leads, right? And and like you said, you're like, I got to make sure these guys are straight hustler door knockers. And these guys are like, I got to just sit in the couch and get a preset appointment. And and I'm sure you've noticed nuances as you've developed this. Uh, what are some things you've seen? Yeah. Um, well, I guess just to, we'll start in the, 
July of 2019 when um, when we really started to to kind of get steam in terms of bringing on users. Um, we didn't do much advertising. We were just partnering with a lot of the manufacturers and distrib distributors in the space. So we were entirely focused on roofing at the time. Um, and so what our app did was it allowed you to drive around, right? And, and I say drive around, we're gonna come back to that because that's a really key part in what failed with our first app. Because actually we, we rebuilt it. So we've got our, our second app, we're on our second app. But you could drive around and tag homes based on a symptom, like missing a shingle, yeah. three, age three tab, right? Discontinued shingle. You could tag these homes, different colors on the map, right? And when you tagged them, you could send them a direct mailer, like a jumbo postcard that says, hey, I drove by and noticed your home has a missing tab, right? So we were in the business of scouting roofs that need to be replaced and we use direct mail to help the, the roofing contractor let the homeowner own, get the roofing company, the roofing company in their home. Yeah. Um, Jim Johnson, when he 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 found us like late 19, early 2020, and he's like, it's digital door knocking. Well, why did he say that? Well, part of it is like COVID. Right? So so we went from like midway 2019, like presenting this tool to the marketplace where guys didn't want to knock doors, right? Every every roofer and every solar guy's got their head on a swivel. They're just looking at roofs and houses all day long. They spend like, more time so you know, looking at roofs versus actually talking to the people. It's so funny. Like you it, drive around a neighborhood. Dude, I make this joke all the freaking time. It's like you have roofer driving out to neighborhood and then they're like scout neighborhood for like 45 minutes. And then they're like, oh, but by the time I go talk to people, it's like lunch. So I mean, might as well go to lunch and then we could start it. They go to lunch, they come back. They're like, well, I saw a sign. Let's go see if there's another more damage on this one. And then it's like six o'clock by the time you even get out of the freaking car. Yeah, they didn't know anything. yeah dude. And this is why we're going to D2D Cup. So the, the idea was un, unfounded in terms of we didn't have any data on if this was good, right? Like I didn't know who you were, Sam. So thanks a lot, dude. If I had known who you were, I probably would have like cut that immediately. Um, but no, truly, like it was a canvassing tool. I mean, you know how many people came to us that were like, we're using Sales Rabbit or, or we're using Spotio or what's different about your tool? Like we're looking at a can like we were a canvassing tool. But our whole thing, our pitch was scout, identify, and mail. Yeah. Well, what do you think happened like come like late 2020? You think all these homeowners are like, Gee, golly, Willikers, thanks for sending me this postcard. I'm going to call you. No, right? You have to send 10,000 of them for that to even come close. Like, Sam, guys would send 100 and be like, bro, like your tool doesn't work. So that's not the, and, and, and truthfully, right? For the, the guys that are listening to this, or maybe like you used me back then, I'm not blaming you. Like I was the one that sold you the bill of goods. Like I gave you the tool and said like, Hey, you know, go do it. And that's on me. Um, the good news is, is I, I like deprecated that we spent hundreds of thousands of dollars building that thing and we threw it in the trash. So just so you know, you know, I got what was coming to me. So we rebuilt it. Right. And we built it on two, two new ideals. And the first one is if you're going to send mail, it's got to be like an evergreen drip type of an automated process. So if you're going to send one, you better send like five more, right? Yeah, or three you, more, you, right? You program that, obviously. And, and program. You, and it's like Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving. You know, it's like this thing better hit them like throughout the whole year. Yeah. And in the where the old program, just so you know, like it was like a one shot, right? It wasn't, it was, it was a semi automatic, but it was hard to shoot. Like you sent one and then the, the guys would have to like know to send another one, right? So the the idea is that if, if you're gonna do mail, it's gotta be a drip program, right? So we, we built that infrastructure. And then the big one was, um, oh, by the way, guys, like if you're gonna send that house mailers, you better get out of your truck and walk up to the door. So here's a mobile application that will track those connections, similar to any canvassing tool, right? But the difference is, Sam, is we are 
we are going after the guy and, and and maybe you'll you'll roll your eyes at me but we're going after the guys that don't knock doors today i'm trying to change like you are i want to change the mindset of every single roofing contractor about what it means to get out of your truck how we do it at lead scout is we give you a bite-sized list that anybody and their mother can accomplish and that's key so what i see is a hurdle a big hurdle and i'd love to hear like your, your feedback even on this podcast is when you tell someone to get out of their truck and knock doors like that example you gave that's overwhelming and oftentimes like i don't know where to start right nice. when i when i switched over to this business and i said I, I don't know anything about roofing or anything about this stuff i went and knocked doors for a local roofing company that was one of our beta users okay nobody told me what to do or to go it's just like this area is great it was hit by hail okay so i just started knocking doors in our world right we want to tell you hey if you're going to go run a lead or visit a job site or you got a little honey hole neighborhood you know about how about you take like 15 homes assign it to the guy running the lead right and just say i expect you to put a door hanger on those 15 doors and if you ate your wheaties this morning i expect you to knock 10 of them so literally what we're trying to do is is every user that comes on our platform the goal is that every lead they run whether it's one a day or five a day creates a bite-sized list of like 10 to 20 homes yeah and it's a curated list of owner occupied homes that's on the map they get a notification on their on their iphone that says hey chris you've been assigned 15 homes around that lead you're running at 2 30. i open up that list and i go done 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 and everybody's like way to go chris you just touched 15 more homeowners and then guess what by the end of the year i've walked up to 5,000 doors right I so love- that's what we're in the business of doing when i was 30 years old my buddy said i bet you can't do one push-up more than you did the day before or that was eight years ago i'm a small guy anyways but that's why i don't look huge but anyways i i said okay you're on I did 50,000 push-ups that year. Holy you God. think I did that the next day? No, I did one more than the day before. This idea of if you just implement something small in your day that's repeatable, all of a sudden by the end of the quarter, end of the year, you look back and be like, holy shit, I just did 50,000 push-ups. Or holy shit, I just walked up to 5,000 doors. And you know what, for the guy that's like, I will not, won't not, will, you know, knock a door, no problem, dude, because you just put yourself in the way of opportunity 5,000 times. Love this. Ooh, there's so much to unpack here. I want to go to the psychology of what you just reversed. So I don't think a lot of listeners might catch this, but like you said, when you have this vague approach of like, go knock today, most people, they get decision fatigue. They don't know how to do it. And we get what's called stimulus bound because of like, there's so many options, you just get stuck. And when you're in that state of, I have so much going on, I don't do any of it. And I mean, maybe a lot of people would relate to that. The easy way to do it is like what he said, bite-sized piece. And we all function really well, given a clear, simple roadmap, which James Clear calls an implementation intention. When a manager, a leader, a system, a calendar, whatever tells you, like on this, I'd be at, on my thing at one o'clock. I, I, I didn't even plan this. My assistant puts it on calendar and I just am like, what's next? Like, I'm not wondering what should I be doing today to be effective? I just look at calendar and it tells me what to pop up next and I do that thing and then I close calendar, then I do that thing. And, you know, most people need a guide. And so as an owner and a a manager, by saying, here's where to go, when to go and what to do, it takes away the thinking to where now all of a sudden somebody's just like, I just show up and I just, I just do the thing. It's not like invent a new workout every week, every morning. No, here's your workout, do the workout, you know, invent, you know, a business today and then a new one tomorrow. And then a new one, it's like, it just causes anxiety. And so this element of knock the build or knock your six pack or knock around, it's not new. It's just how often can you get your people to do it is the problem. And this strategy that you've taken is a a really strong approach to, hey, just go check the boxes on these 15 people because you know the data, you have homeowner information, you know the location, you know, you know what I mean? It's like, and then you can just track. You're like, did you or did you not? check these boxes and I can verify that. 
Yep. Good job. High five. Dopamine. You're the man. Or you didn't. You idiot. How long do you want me to keep you here if you can't just do a simple task? Check boxes, dude. Do the thing. Yep. Yep. hundred percent. So what you just said, I, I, I never had the psychology terminology behind it, but we were just approaching it kind of from the common sense. It's helpful to actually hear it from the science, but the common sense that, and from our own user experience with our, we'll call it Leads Got 1.0, where what every contractor had was a blank map. They had a really cool app where you could drop a colorful pin on a house, right? But it like, never mind the driving around and the mail thing, let's put that aside for a second because we had guys that were like got it immediately they're like well i'm gonna use this for door knocking right i mean a lot of door knocking companies use were using our platform but what happened was they they didn't maximize their potential because there were so many guys in the group that saw a blank map and that's they had paralysis they're like i don't even know how to start so we learned from that to say because here, even today, Sam, everybody's like, how do I drop a pin on the map? And I'm like, you can't. Now, of course, eventually, like it is on a product roadmap. That'll be a capability, of course. But it's like, no, I need to help retrain you to say, if don't think about that extra pin, think about the 20 I just gave you. You knock those out today and then the, and then the other one tomorrow and you keep doing that. Well, then you can start adding to that. And in fact, if you if that's not big enough for you, set your 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 program to be 30 homes we so, talk about a really small because we want everybody that starts to be like dude i'm crushing it right i was 10 out of 10 today yeah i was 10 out of 10 the day before that and it's right? a, and it's a win on activity and like if you you know i don't know if you've read the book mini habits by uh steven mm -hmm. Gus. Yeah, dude, you're using like, um, I'm trying to give you the philosophy and the and the trainers behind your psychology that you've just common sense quote. So there's a book called Mini Habits. He then wrote another book called Elastic Habits. But his whole thing was, can you do one push up a day? He's like, can you make a can you make a habit so small that it's almost ludicrous how funny it would be if you didn't do it? And if it's, yeah. if it, it's too big, if you didn't do it, meaning you, you got to make it smaller. Yeah, so you, you, it's a, almost rather see a win, meaning you 100% did all 10 out of 10 or 20 out of 20, than telling somebody be like, go out and talk to 100 people today. And consistently, they talk to 12. And then you're like, why have you talked to 50 people there or whatever your number is? And then consistently, they talk to five. I'm like, how about we consistently just get in a habit. And then the second thing that you talked about is the compounding your your result, which is mm -hmm. now can you talk to two? Now can you talk to three? You know, and so, you know, Mike O'Donnell talks a lot about this and, and, and his philosophy is just, you know, he's the one that kind of put me onto this book of mini habits, but he's like, I had a goal to get one no before getting back in my truck. Meaning you go to the lead and then you have your 10 around the lead. But he's like, before I get back in truck, I have to get a no. Well, it's easy to think I have to get a no versus I have to get a yes. A yes sounds big. It sounds like, where am I going to get my yes? What if they tell me no? What if they don't do it? And he's like, I have to get a no. What do you mean? What if they tell you no? That's what you're going for. You're just going to get a no. Because that's so much easier. Okay. If you can get one no a day, that gets me out of the car and means I'm on a door. I'm not driving around in a truck and I'm not just sitting there like looking and scouting. I'm talking to a human being because they have to tell me no. Does that make sense? So like, it's this concept of... Uh, oh you know kind of retraining our brains to get ourselves into motion and the last podcast i just did is a guy named coach burt and his whole concept is activating prey drive um you know light igniting a spark it's like we every day have to find ways as owners managers to activate the prey drive within our people and as individuals activate the prey drive within ourselves and anyway this is it's just an interesting approach because you don't come from my world right like you you come from a different world but are solving a problem mm -hmm. that you kept witnessing over and over and over again yeah and i wouldn't have known that had we not had the failure we had so you know and i don't want to sound like uh sappy and you know corny but like the reality is like we have to make these massive mistakes sometimes right your your, your customers my customers are going to make mistakes 
we all make mistakes. That's how we arrive at really amazing things. And, um, you know, we, we don't look back and regret. We look back like, thank the Lord that happened um, because it set us up to, to build what we have today, which is really going to help the contractors. Donald Miller's got a famous quote. Uh, if you if you've ever if you don't know him or know his uh, story brand, um, building a story brand, but he's got a quote. He says, "The day you stop losing sleep over your own business and start losing sleep over your customers is the day you grow." And I think one of the things we've done a really good job of in our culture here is we're obsessed with making sure whatever we put out helps the contractor, helps our user succeed. If they're not succeeding, we're going out of business. I mean, that's what you, 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 you live that every single day, unless guys stand up and be like, it wasn't until I adopted Sam's process and I, I gave my team that training and I tracked their, their use of that training and is until we grew. And if, if nobody grows, nobody's going to come back to use your stuff. 100%. So, um, you know, it's just kind of the, the mindset we've had. And that has been one of our, our best assets and, and greatest decisions that we've made to just be relentless about it and not just be another tech tool out there that's got some shiny cool thing that we're like oh look at this cool ai thing and it's like yeah but does it help the roofer yes like i don't really care about the fancy ai stuff unless the roofer can see that their business has changed 100 percent, 100 percent. So I kind of want to shift gears and, and wrap on another topic real quick that you mentioned. You said you trialed and aired in the mailer and you said it doesn't work with a one shot. And you said it's got to be a constant drip. I think that same thing would apply to text, email, door knock, call, mm -hmm. all of them. Like why, why is it important to have this drip mentality instead of one shot mentality? I think a lot of door knockers might have a one shot mentality. Yeah. Yeah. No, ab absolutely. Um, I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of reasons for that. I mean, there's decision making time for any consumer. I mean, we all have seasons to our decision making. I think about making certain buying decisions differently than I do today than I do in March or June. Right. So, having a more evergreen drip approach over time and that's now that's a long that's months and months it doesn't always have to be that way you can take that and, and create a, a microcosm within a month period of time or a, a, you know a couple months um but the reality is is it, it doesn't it's not just one thing that you do another great example of that is billboards uh, talk to somebody that has one billboard and then go talk to somebody that has 20 of them the guy that has 20 will get a phone call from a buddy that'll be like, dude, when did you put the billboard up on 28th Street? And there's, he's like, dude, you moron. I've had that there for 10 years. But he didn't see it until he started putting up more all over the city. So the reality is, is you put one up, it won't get seen. You put up 10 or 20, all of a sudden people are like, when did you put that billboard up? It's there the whole time. Mm -hmm. It's the same idea. So, um, so yeah, drip, I mean, if you're gonna do it, you have to do a drip, Talk, and ask back to mail, ask anybody that's that's done a mail campaign and had a, a lousy experience, which is gonna be majority of your, your, your customers. If you ask, well, what did you do with the mail campaign? Like who helped you do it? How did you do it? They'd say, yeah, we did it to like 2,500 people, like one of those every door direct EDDM things. And just ask them like, how many mailers did you send? They'll say 2,500. No, how many mailers did you send? What do you mean? Four or five for 2,500, yeah, right? Yeah. But to, in, in their defense, no one told them to do that. Because you know what the, why is? Because they were just trying to sell mail. How hard is it to sell a four drip campaign to 2,500 versus one? One. Yeah. One. So if I'm selling you mail, I'm going to tell you to do one. But if I'm trying to help you grow your business and actually get leads, I'm going to say send four. I love but it. here's where Lead Scout comes in and says, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't do 25. Who's going to go knock those 2,500? You got somebody that can knock 2,500? No. Okay, well, we're not going to do 2,500 then. We're going to do like 25 in like 20 different areas. Right? Interesting. So if, if we're going to do mail, 
right? We need to make sure that it's repetitive, but that somebody can own that. The beautiful thing about mail is that it, it's a one-to-one -one relationship, right? I mean, a lot of these marketing tools that we have, we don't know where they're going, right? That's why we, we've got all these like lead tracking numbers and all these things that we can help track attribution, which is great. But when it comes to mail, I mean, Sam, we've learned so much. I mean, those that, if anybody's listening, that's a customer, it's probably like this kind of all makes sense now because they don't get to be in, in, in our day to day and, and, and hear all this stuff all the time. But we're constantly changing things. And sometimes I feel like customers are like, wait a second, I thought you said to do this. I'm like, yeah, but we measured it and it doesn't really work. So I'm here to help you with stuff that works. So one of those examples, we put tracking numbers on all the mailers. OK. We stopped doing that. And then we had some people like, what are you talking about? Well, every mailer you mail with me, I can tell you the address they mail. Every lead you run has what? An address. So what do we need to mail it? What do we need a phone number to do to track that attribution, right? And what we found is that when you send mail, it, the people don't just get the mail and like, oh my goodness, I'm gonna call this right now. No, they go on Yelp, they go on Google, they, they, you know, they think about it and they see your truck and then they see your sign and yeah. then they call up. Hey, what's right? this? And then you're like, how did you hear about me? Oh, I saw, I don't know, I saw your truck. So the idea is if we know we're always targeting a specific address in the case of mail, we don't need a tracking number, right? All we have to do is just run a report on all houses mailed to have the leads in your system. And we can do that automatically for you yeah, yeah. in integration with your CRM. So, so we got rid of, you know, call tracking numbers, which, you know, unless someone really hears that, understands that they're like, you're nuts. Why would you do that? Interesting. No, no, it makes sense. It's like, Attribution is a hard thing, and I think there's so much value in it, but I think some people don't realize there's seven doors to knock, and it might be that when you knock their front door, they finally are like, oh, but it wasn't, they would have never said yes had they not got your mailer, had they not seen your text, and the billboard, and the truck drive by four times, then you knock door, then they're like, wait, are you the guy? And you're like, yep, that's me. Like, people don't realize, like, marketing yeah. is its own element. There's a branding side, there's an awareness side, there's a cost per lead side, there's a closing percentage side, there's a, I mean, there's so many things that can go into that. Um, so it's just interesting unpacking this a little bit. Um, well, Chris, we, oh yeah, I, I just wanted to say one other thing. We, what's interesting about what we have a built-in cheat, and that is if you've shown that you've knocked the door in the app and you've shown that you sent a mailer or multiple mailers, our attribution's black and white. Like. Uh, if, if it's a lead on December 16, and we have record that you mailed them five times prior to that, and Johnny was out there and marked it twice, um, it's yeah. an attribution. Like all the, all the, I want to help the contractor know is you spent X number of dollars in resources and knocking X number of dollars in mail on a thousand homes. How many of those thousands are customers and giving you money now? And we can do that every single time. It's cool. It's cool. I love this. No, I'm, I'm, I'm getting tons of little nuggets. And if you guys are listening, uh, you know, this is a, a cool, different approach that comes from a different background. Like I'm always about try everything once or twice and understand what philosophies and what systems and what tech and what automation and what campaign. And you, you know, you got to write the mail, you got to strategize what's working, what's getting more people enticed. Is it like a notice looking mail or is it a, you know, just a traditional flyer looking thing. Like, you know, there's different things that you can strategize with. And I think a lot of people think there's a one shot, one bullet, one app, one, you know, and I'm like, guys, it still doesn't take away from the thing you said at the very beginning, get out of your car and go knock the freaking door. Like, you know what I mean? And, and, and it's so fun to see marketers, to app companies, to all sorts of people just take pride in our, in our, in our tribe. And you should take pride in the tribe. Like you should take pride in the fact they're investing in you, going to a conference, going to this, like getting out of your car, hustling to make make ends meet. And uh, there's an abundance out there for the people that's willing to to really go out and slay it. Um, so Chris, uh, one last like short answer, entrepreneurial advice. If you could say new dude starting a new business tomorrow, what advice would you tell him? Set boundaries. I mean, if, if but I don't care if you have started your family yet. I mean, I have a wife of 15 years and three kids. Um, 
So my boundaries are, you know, my, the first few are pretty clear. Um, but even if you're a single guy or gal, like you have other things in your life and make sure that you put those where they need to be and create healthy boundaries around it because it is so easy and I'm still, I still fail at it like way more than I'd like to admit um, where I just become obsessed with the business. I mean, sometimes I think my kids think I love Lead Scout my phone more than them. And that's, that's, you know, that's something I need to really keep in check. And so um, I would say if you can, I didn't do that early on. And so it's just, it's more of an uphill battle for me because I'm constantly trying to like, you know, m fix that. Um, but if early on you can set those boundaries, um, that would be, that'd be the first thing that came to my head. Cool. Love it. No, like tons of value guys. Again, go to leadscoutapp.com if you guys want more information. Come check him out at DDDCon. Go, he'll be there and his little booth set up. And uh, we love to love to see everybody inspiring everybody to be better, Can't wait. better marketers and uh, leveling up. So I love the passion you got behind it. And uh, thanks for all your nuggets you've shared today, man. Yeah, thank you, Sam, for the opportunity. Uh, thanks. Okay, see you guys. Like, share, and comment. You know the drill. Love your feedback. Peace out.